Welcome to this month's i 2 Costex Coffee Break webinar. I am Fatin Sohaili and I am a product consultant for i 2 Costex at RIB. This month, we will be continuing our series based on industry trades such as carpentry, civil, infrastructure and others. For this edition, I will focus on groundwork specifically on cut and fill. For those who do not know, i 2 Costex is a fully integrated estimating solution with universal application, supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD drawings, as well as BIM files. i 2 Costex is available in a variety of feature levels depending on the size of your business or your estimating requirements. i 2 Costex offers quick and easy on-screen takeoff and measurement that can be live linked to our comprehensive workbooks to help you save time and eliminate errors. The platform also offers a professional report writer, an auto-revisioning tool to help with new drawing versions, and much more. And as you can see over here, there are a huge variety of file types supported by i 2 Costex to help with compatibility as we want your import and export processes to be as smooth as possible. Our latest webinar covered the measurement takeoff for pipework and process equipment presented by my colleague. He mostly covered on how to deal with different scales on PDF drawings and utilize custom quantities and formulas available in creating dimension groups, mainly for pipework and process equipment in various industries. To view this webinar, you can visit our website at www.rib-international slash webinars or simply visit RIB's YouTube page. As I have mentioned earlier, this month's webinar edition, I will be taking you through cut and fill measurement. There are two approaches to calculate cut and fill. So today, I will demonstrate the contour line method and the spot or also known as grid level method. For the contour line method to calculate my excavation and fill volume, I will be using offset function in creating dimension group as well as properties on add function. After that, I will take you to view your measurement in 3D mode. And for the second approach, I will be utilizing the existence of variables in creating dimension group and create the correct formula in expression editor for our cut and fill quantity. So now let's switch over to i 2 Costex and let's get started. Before I proceed any further, let's talk more about cut and fill. It is very rare for a site to be perfectly flat and ready to be occupied. Depending on the site condition, it is most likely for the site to be sloping and required cut and fill to ensure that the site is level and prepared. As you can see on my drawing list on the left hand side on this display screen, I will be using two different drawings to demonstrate two different approaches to calculate the cut and fill quantity. But first, let's focus on the contour line method. The drawing that you are currently looking at is an example of contour line method. It is a two-dimensional mapping, which is commonly used method to calculate cut and fill. It represents the existing land levels, which are shown by contour lines at regular vertical intervals above set datum point or usually at sea level. For this method, cut and fill areas are determined based on the relationship between finished floor level of the structure and thickness of formation required on that level. For this building, it denotes that the finished floor level is at 47.19 including 220 thick formation level consisting of 20 thick of gravels, 50 thick blinding, insulation, and 150 thick of concrete. Radius level for this site is at 46.97 at datum point as per display screen here. After perusing the site drawing, we are aware that for this building site, the highest datum point is at 46.7 around this area here at the corner of this building, and 
the lowest is at 46.40 at the bottom corner here. The interval between the contour line is 0 0.2, which equates to 200 millimeter high at each interval. Prior to this webinar, I have created a designated dimension group for this approach. And let's have a quick review on the setup for this dimension group here. As you can see on my display screen here, I have named it as excavate to reduce level dash example. And the measurement type, I have set it into area. However, my default display is in volume, just because we are trying to calculate the volume of excavation for this site. My default height, as I mentioned earlier, the difference between each contour line is 0 0.2, which equates to 200 millimeter high at each interval. I have also keyed in information into my default offset, 0 0.8. However, each interval would have different offset and this offset function, it enables you to set interval differences at each contour line just so that later on you get to view your measurements in 3D mode. So now let's begin with our first area measure. Since we have set the default offset to 0 0.8, then we will start with the top corner of the building site here. As we progress to another area measure, let's first switch on the properties on add button located in the dimension tab ribbon. So this function allows you to adjust the varying information required, such as for our offset, which I will show you in a split second. Now, dimension properties window will pop up on your screen as you switch on the properties on add button. So over here, you can untick the use default in the offset field and you can adjust it as we progress with our area measure. So for now, the offset would be 0 0.6, mainly because the difference between each contour line is 0 0.2. So now let's click on update. Unfortunately, I will not continue the area measure for the whole building site as I have already created two dimension groups specifically for my excavation and backfilling volume quantities along with the adjusted offset. As you can see on the left hand side on my screen here, I have gotten my excavation quantities as well as my backfilling quantities. Now I would hold down the control button on my keyboard to select multiple multiple dimension groups. Now, it would highlight it on my display screen here for the measured items. And as I hover my mouse onto the dimension tabs here and expanded the folders, as you can see over here on the left hand side on my screen, I have got different offsets for my fill and also for my excavation quantities. As for my excavation quantities, I will have positive offsets and for my fill, I have created negative offsets. Now, another method I would like to demonstrate is the spot or also known as grid level. For this approach, I will use this drawing as an example. And as you can see from my display screen here, the existing points are scattered at varying locations. Therefore, we will need to do area measurements based on either three or four existing levels and use the average depth minus the formation level to calculate the volume quantity of our cut and fill. With this complex formula, we can utilize the existence of variables available within the formula expression editor whilst creating the dimension group to achieve the volume of excavation or fill on this site. For this method, I also have created a designated dimension group prior to this webinar. So now let's just double click on this example here. Similarly, like my contour line method, I have set my measurement type as area and my default display in volume. So now to insert variables, we will need to go to measured dimension tab located over here. Since we are trying to calculate the average height of existing levels, we need to untick this use default height 
and use this ellipsis button to key in formula. Now, Dimension Group Expression Editor will open up on your screen. And this is where you get to key in your formula for the height. But first, as I mentioned earlier, we will utilize the existence of variables in the editor. So let's click on the variables. And let's click on the insert on the right hand side. And the first one I would like to enter is the number of levels. And the type would be selection. As I have mentioned, we will either be using three levels or four levels to capture the area of the existing levels. And the unit would be in number. Over here, the options would be three or four. And the default would be three. So now let's click on insert. Now, as I expand that dimension group variables, your inserted variable will appear underneath there. Now let's click on another one, but this time it is for our existing level. So first let's call it as existing level A. And it would be number for the type. And since we are trying to determine the depth of the existing level, it would be in meter. And click on insert. Now let's repeat the same step again. Now we have entered four existing levels. Now the last one would be formation level. So let's click on insert and enter formation level. Now I will use this arrow to make sure that I have got everything in alphabetical order. Once we have set our variables, now we can use them to enter the average depth formula. So now I will just double click on my existing level A plus existing level B plus existing level C and plus now, since we created a selection of three or four levels earlier on, we will need to use the if formula. So let's say if there are four existing levels, then we will need to include this formula. If there are four existing levels, then we will need to double click on the fourth existing level, which is existing level D. Zero. Close the bracket and let me just quickly add two brackets in here. So now divided by the number of levels. Minus. The formation level. Now let's click on close. So now the formula will be available in the height field. So now let's click on the update button. 
Now let's begin with our area takeoff. But first, we will need to switch on our properties on add function, which I already have. So this function will allow us to adjust the variables that we have created. And I will grab on each point over here and I will grab four existing points and click on enter to complete the measurement. So dimension properties window will open up on your screen. And as you can see over here in my variables underneath here, I have a selection of number of levels. So I will select it as four. So I will just hover that window over there. So for the existing level A, I will enter 19.2 A. Existing level B, 19.30. Existing level C, 19.37. And the last one is 19.46. Now, I know that the formation level is at 19.2, mainly because it was shown on another drawing. Now, let's click on update. Now, as I hover my mouse, you can see on the information window, I have got my area as well as the volume. So now, I will use another area takeoff for three existing levels. And I will use this drop down arrow to select three number of levels. And the third one is 19.46. And the formation level is usually consistent throughout the site. And I will click on update. So now on the left hand side over here, my volume has already been calculated to 4.95 from this two area measurement. Now that you are more familiar with the function and area takeoffs, you can see the quantity available on the left hand side. Prior to this webinar, I have already designed a dimension group that has full measurement of cut and fill for this site. The total is in positive, which determines the total fill required for this site, which is over here, I have got 70.59 cubic meter. Now, that is the end to my cut and fill webinar. I hope now you have a better idea on how to use variable in the expression editor as well as offset functions, especially in measuring cut and fill. Thank you for listening and spending your time watching this video. And if you would like to watch other exciting webinars, you can visit our page at www.rib-international.com slash webinars or if you have any more question and would like to get in touch please feel free to contact our support at support.int at rib-software.com